Hello everybody! I just played through Urban Chaos on the Sega Dreamcast and I'm here to tell you about it and I'm going to go over the good things and the bad things about the game. This game was first released in 1999 on Windows. In mid-2000 it came out on the PS1 and this version came out in late 2000. It was the first game created by the British studio Mucky Foot. Urban Chaos 2 was in the works at some point, but they cancelled it when the studio closed. There's a PS2 game called Urban Chaos Riot Response, but that game is not related to this one. This game was originally called Dark City, and you can tell because it takes place in a dark urban environment. Most of the time it's raining, and most of the time it's at night. There's three different characters you can play as, but most of the time you play as Officer Stern. She is a cop who just started on the force. You participate in 24 missions. In most of those, your main job is to track down criminals around the city by arresting them or killing them. And you have to do it without killing too many civilians. You can use hand-to-hand -hand combat or you can use weapons. You can also get inside vehicles and drive those around. This may look like a Grand Theft Auto ripoff, but in reality it came out one year before the first 3D Grand Theft Auto. So now I'm going to go over the good and bad aspects of the game. I'm going to start with a bad one. The controls. When you have no weapon in your hand and you get close to a criminal, you get locked into this battle stance with them and you have to have some one-on-one -on -one combat. This part is very hard to control and you'll notice it right away. The manual shows a lot of different combat moves, but I couldn't get a lot of them to execute. When a criminal is on the ground, you can hit the A button to search them, but you have to be right in a specific spot in order to do it. If you're not standing in the right spot, you end up crouching instead, and it looks like you're teabagging them. And sometimes there's a cutscene where you have to do something right after the cutscene, but for the first few seconds after that cutscene, the control is badly delayed. What our brotherhood will bring down on this city! This has gotten me killed a few times because it causes me to over control and I sometimes fall off a building or I get shot. It's also very hard to drive one of the vehicles in the game without running into stuff. I avoided all the driving that I could. There's also a lot of times where you're on top of buildings in this game and it's very easy to fall off because the jumping and all the different motions that you do are just awkward to pull off. It's hard to describe in words, but if you ever test it out yourself, you'll know what I mean. One way to improve the control is to go into the options menu and choose move as the controller option. This turns off the tank controls. And now for a good thing about the game, the game pulls off a dark atmosphere very effectively. I already mentioned it takes place at night most of the time. It has a Gotham City vibe to it. When you talk to citizens, they are very jaded about the crime and about the police's inability to control it and so you'll hardly find any of them that are friendly. You and the other cops in the game are also jaded. They cuss a lot and they have no problem killing a criminal. And now for another bad aspect, and that's the repetitive gameplay. You keep seeing the same six or so criminals, and you pretty much use the same techniques on them over and over again through all 24 missions. That hand-to-hand -hand combat really gets old. I skip the punching and the kicking, and instead I do this throw move, where I throw them to the ground and handcuff them. And then I search them. So I do a throw and a search, a throw and a search, a throw and a search, over and over again throughout the game. Searching gives you ammo, and I'm always looking for ammo because I want to use the guns and not the one-on-one -on -one fighting. And now back to a positive aspect. The weapons gameplay is better than the fighting gameplay. There's three guns, a pistol, a shotgun, and a machine gun. And there's a knife and a baseball bat. And the shooting works pretty well. It locks onto the nearest target and you just pull the trigger and shoot. There's a little bit of strategy involved. You can't just run up to somebody and start shooting. You kind of creep up on them from a distance and shoot them from afar. And another cool thing is that the VMU keeps track of the ammo. And now for a bad aspect, and that is the stage layout. The city is a giant grid, and every street looks the same, for the most part. There's not that many landmarks. So as a result, when you're doing these missions, it's easy to get lost. But there is one good aspect that it does to help you, and that's the radar. Each target in the mission has an arrow, and you just follow the arrow that's on the radar. Without that assistance, I would not have been able to complete the game. 
and now for another minus and that is the long missions sometimes they can be up to 45 minutes long and there are no save points and it kind of sucks when you get 40 minutes into it and you die and you have to do the whole thing over again but that brings me to a plus it has the right amount of challenge at least for me I failed each mission two or three times before I successfully figured out what I needed to do that seems to be a good balance and now for a bad aspect, and that's the graphics. I have to bear in mind that this game is 20 years old, but the textures on the buildings just look really bad compared to other Dreamcast games I've played in the past. In particular, the windows and the doors and the air conditioning. It just looks like somebody blotched those things onto the sides of the buildings. And I'll mention again that they don't use that many different character models for the criminals, and you end up fighting the same people over and over again. And the frame rate struggles when there's a lot going on. You can turn off a bunch of things in the options menu to make the game run better, like the rain and the skyline, but I don't advise doing this because these things are key to the atmosphere of the game. There's some glitches in the game too, and I wouldn't say that these are a bad aspect of the game. They kind of make it fun, actually. For example, here's a guy who's standing inside the sidewalk. And here's a guy who I killed and his body is sticking out the side of a pool. Here's a woman who's kicking explosive barrels around. And one weird thing you'll see is that the vehicles that are traveling around the city, they sometimes have trouble driving themselves. They end up running into the scenery sometimes and get stuck on things. But one aspect they did do very well in regards to the graphics are the explosions. And I don't know why they put so much effort into the explosions in this game, but uh, there's some exploding mines, exploding barrels, and later on in the game there's actually exploding people. And if you have the rumble pack in, that thing goes crazy when things are exploding. Here's another plus, and this is probably one of the best aspects of the game, and that is it improves a lot in the late stages. In like the final 10 missions or so, the game plays better and looks better. You kind of get away from the city grid lines and you end up being more out in the open and in more scenic places and more colorful places. The story gets a little bit more dramatic and takes a sci-fi turn. I mentioned earlier that the weapons combat is better than the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Late in the game, you don't have to use the hand-to-hand -hand combat as much because there's so many weapons laying around. The second half of the game is just better than the first half of the game. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not going to get a positive impression from the early parts of this game so they're going to give up and I found evidence of that because there's a couple of walkthroughs that I found on the internet that were never completed by the persons who started them. Here's the last bad aspect of the game that I'm going to talk about today, and that is the sound design. There is hardly any music in the game, and when it does have music, the music isn't good. I did go on YouTube and look at people playing the Windows version, and it has a lot more music to it. For some reason, they took a lot of it out for this game. Maybe it's because they had trouble getting the game to run on the Dreamcast, so they had to turn off things. Even the credits do not have music to it. So a lot of times you're listening to the ambient sounds of the city, and that's where this game really gets weird. There's two things you will constantly hear throughout the game. One is this ding ding noise. And another is Vroom. Get used to those sounds because you'll hear them throughout the whole entire game. Instead of feeling immersed in a city environment, I'm just puzzled by those noises. It might be the sound of a subway station or something like that. Another weird thing about the sound design is that sometimes when you're fighting a male criminal, the grunts and the groans sound like they're coming from a woman. <laughs> And I'll just add one more plus about the game, and that is it has a few hidden surprises. After you beat the game, there is a bonus mission where you play as a criminal. He had one other mission in the game as well. There's also this club that you can walk into, and it's kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of detail to it. And if you let go of the controls, you actually start dancing. It doesn't have a big role in the game, but it's cool that they put so much effort into this small little thing that you see once. 
So do I recommend that you play Urban Chaos? I'm going to actually say no. I just don't think people are going to like it because of the control issues and the repetitive gameplay. I will say if you do try it, just hang on until you reach that halfway point and that's when the game starts getting a little bit better. So that's all I have to say about Urban Chaos. I hope you enjoyed the review. May your games make you happy and smart and may people respect you for playing them. I'll see you next time.